Uh, we gotta fix uh, the motor on this uh, machine and the information for the machine is right there. Uh, that's what you go by when you're looking for parts for this machine. This, let's lift that up. Just move, move that out of the way. Next, we gotta take this guard off. To do that, you notice that there's like a small bolt right over here. Behind it, right here. Right there, you just push, turn that counterclockwise, and you should be able to lift this up and remove it. So, take off the screws. Phillips head. You can also use a flat head if you want. Screws are off. The plate comes right off. You gotta remove that nut. So I have this. I have this 24 millimeter uh, wrench. It's one of the thin looking ones. Uh, you just push it in there. You see there's a little slot where this fits in. Now with a 516 socket. And now you're gonna turn it. There it is. And you, as you can tell the blade is very loose now. Let me take this wrench out of here. I'm gonna hold the blade here so it doesn't move too much. This is the nut that comes out of it. There's a, also a washer here. This is a washer that comes out of it. The nut goes on this side. The raised side of the washer goes to the right. And this flatter side with a deeper side of it goes towards the blade. Now I'll take the blade out. So this is a machine upside down. This is the bottom of it. If you can tell. It's on top of the wood because I don't want to damage the, the surface. I don't want to scratch the surface. So now, just remove everything else. Just remove all this, all these bolts. That's one out. Just a second. So, all the bolts are off. So now the legs should come out. the dust there's this wire that as you can tell it goes into this box so we got to remove this box so that we can disconnect the wires that go with the motor so that way we can take the motor off there's two screws holding that, that box from the other side of the machine now looking at the machine from this end here you see a two black black screws right here next to the on and off those two screws are the ones that are holding on to this this plate that I mentioned before that is hiding the wires in. So we're gonna remove them. So the so we're gonna remove those two screws. First, plastic cover should come off. So you just kind of like try to wiggle them around until it comes off. See the black one came off easily. And uh, do the same thing with the white one right here. There it is. Came off. It's still Phillips set. So we're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver, remove that, and there we go. Now that little star washer goes in first, then the wire goes on top of it, and then the screw goes in, just so you can keep that in mind. Now that all the wires are removed, as you can tell, they're all loose, they're removed. Now we can actually remove the motor uh, from here. So we got to remove the bolts that are back here. And those are the four bolts, if you can see them down there. So there's four of them. It's so difficult because there's not much space here. So right now my ratchet doesn't fit. This is a 13 millimeter socket. Can't fit it in there. There's no space. Take this handle. And I'm going to turn it. As you can tell, it shows you that up is counterclockwise. And down is clockwise. We're going to turn it down. Actually, actually, we gotta turn. We gotta turn it up because it's already down. And if you notice, as you're turning it to go up, the motor is turning, and it's creating more space in that bracket, so I can fit my ratchet now. So yeah, now I can loosen these bolts. Now you pu push until you you uh, 
loosen them up. So that's what we're gonna do next. There you go. First one is loose, and what you gotta do is you gotta keep turning it like this. You can you notice that it stops making the sound, the ratchet at some point. That's because the bolt is already loose enough that I can use my fingers to loosen that up. So I'm gonna go on to the next one. See with your finger and just turn them and take them off. So I do that to that one, do the same thing with this one right here. I want to show you this is not really easy to do. You're gonna struggle you're gonna struggle quite a bit, but you just gotta be patient. So you put your finger down here, as you can tell my finger is actually holding on to this socket so it doesn't move back. So when I'm loosening this up, you can hear it clicking because I'm holding on with my finger and it's just continuously turning. And as you can tell, this is, this is gonna take a little bit of time because I only have this amount of space to work with the ratchet. But the good thing is that once you loosen up the bolts, you can actually loosen them up by finger. See, my finger is actually turning the bolt now. So you should be able to remove this bolt by hand easily now. And just do it from under. I'm gonna use my other hand to see if I can help it. My, my left hand turn this knot even faster. That's one bolt out. I'm pull this out and I'm gonna go to the next one do the same thing the last bolt out this is the only thing holding the motor right now this little screw and that's the first that's the screw you want to put in first when you're reassembling this so let me see if I can I want to get my eight millimeter socket and I'm gonna put it right back here and I'm gonna loosen this up I can't because I can see the screw turning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ratchet again. And I brought in my Phillips head screwdriver. It's going to help me pull that screw so it doesn't turn when I'm loosening this up. Yeah, there you go. Now it's loose enough so I can remove it by hand. So now, as I remove this now, there it is. Motor's about to fall off, so I'm gonna grab it, <clears throat> remove it, remove that bracket. This is the screw that was on it. So the motor is out. Now we have the motor out. So this is, in order to get inside the motor now, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to remove four screws. Notice that where the bracket is located. You have the cord coming out of here with the sticker with the specs for the motor. This is where the bracket goes. And the curved side goes to the left hand side if you're looking at it this way. So keep that in mind so when you're reassembling this, you can actually reassemble it the same way. See this is pointing up towards the same direction that, that the bolt, the aperture bolt is actually pointing at. So we're gonna Remove those screws and then the this housing should be able to become a part from this metal plate right here, like that. So let's take a look at um, how we can remove that. Okay, so the first, first screw that I'm going to take off is this one. So this, look how long that screw is. It's way longer than every other screw that we have in the machine. Just keep everything together. Keep the washers together with the screw. Keep everything organized so that you can put everything back together the same way and you don't lose any screws. So next one I'm going to remove is this one. That's the other screw. So we're going to turn the the motor around so that we can take a look at the other screws and just in case if you're wondering why do I have this wood here I actually have it so I can raise the motor and I can keep this away from the ground so that's why I have this facing down like this is raised so that I have a gap down here so it doesn't hit the ground as I'm removing the screws This is our last screw. There we go. Let's 
screw these out and now this plate I'm gonna put it right on the side exactly the same way I took it off like this put it right here on the side uh, now to remove now the brushes I want to remove the brushes because um, I want to make sure I inspect them as I take everything apart just in case there's anything any issues with it I can also buy that part if I need to so to remove these brushes you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver so I'm gonna turn it over to the side so you can take a look at that see it's like a flathead uh, slot there so you just turn it counterclockwise like that and you see how once you take this little cover off the cover plate off and then the brush pops up it has a spring on it so you just pull it slightly just not too hard and this is our brush see it is it has a number 522 so i'm assuming that's how you're going to end up getting your the brush that you need but you can also go by the machine number the model number that we, i showed you earlier uh it's a, there's a little crack here um i'm still going to use it because the bottom piece is flat but if you are not comfortable with it just get a new one mine so uh, uh that's one brush there's another brush on the other side um but let's go over to the next side where the other brush is so here we go if you want you can put your finger on it so it doesn't pop up so you can have some pressure on it there you go it's loose now so see your finger on it this comes off brush comes off easily now that has been removed now you can remove the, the motor and uh, now you can start working on your on the motor all right so we have this this plastic piece here it's actually melted in and if you can as you can tell i can't really turn this it gets stuck right there and i think that's why the motor is humming and it's not turning so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to melt this out a little bit so i can remove it and hopefully it freezes up this 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 stuff here that it sees so i have this heat gun I'm gonna try to heat it up as much as I can until it comes off. I'm tr I'm not trying to like heat it up too too hot to which it melts this fan here. I'm just trying to heat it up enough so I can remove this. This is what I'm hoping for. So as you can tell, this one it looks like it's melting a little bit already. Let's see. There you see, it's moving, it's melting now. It's moving. Getting out of the way now. There we go. Out. That was the chunk that I was trying to remove. Now this moves freely now. See? That's exactly what I wanted to see. Now next, I noticed this bearing here ceased and i think what the happened was that it once it's this seized because the oil the grease inside uh, dries out and once it dries out the bearings are get really hot once it once it heats up i mean metal with heat uh, causes it to melt a little bit and they will basically seize once it once it cools down and i think it got so hot in here after a while just moving bare there with old bearings the plastic on the other end all the way on the end down there basically melted and that's how we ended up with get, with that big chunk of plastic stuck to this so right now uh, all, I need to, all I gotta do now is replace this bearing I'm hoping that fixes the whole problem and then we got a motor running again what I gotta do next is um, I wanna remove this um, this entire piece from here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it just pull it really hard <clears throat> there you go just pull it hard enough now you have this separated notice there's some greasing in here there's greasing there we gotta re-grease all this because I have a feeling that the grease here is so old uh, it has to be changed uh, I'm gonna see now if this bearing is good and it feels good it's not making noise 
and smooth. So what I will do is I'll probably remove this little red cover here. I'm going to re-grease it and uh, put it back together. So now we, we have we have this bearing that we got to remove here. This bearing is stuck. It's not moving anywhere. So to remove this bearing, what we're going to do is we're going to get... Uh, what I did is that I went to AutoZone. And I picked up this this tool. They loaned these tools. It's uh, number 8060. Uh, you can just go to AutoZone and uh, tell them that you want to borrow that tool. And this is how it looks. So this bearing separator opens up like this. You can loosen this these nuts from here if you want them wider. You put that bearing separator right behind the bearing. Squeeze it in, and now we tighten the the nuts. So the next thing next thing is I'm gonna take this puncher right here, and I'm gonna hit it with a hammer uh, right in the middle here, and hopefully the bearing will remain here and the rod is gonna fall. And just try to pull it like halfway. Uh, I don't, I'm not trying to let the whole rod fall straight down. So I wanna see. Let's see. So I put a little bit of uh, anti penetrating fluid in here, right in the middle, hoping that the penetrating fluid is gonna loosen it up a little bit or help it loosen up. The only problem is that it's really hard the way I'm hitting it here is at an angle. Just wish I had something else where I can just stand it nice and, and straight down. But unfortunately I don't have anything else, so I'm just working with this. There it is. You can see that the you can see that the middle rod falling straight down. So at this point it's about to separate. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to hold it underneath so it doesn't fall. So I hold it right on the bottom of it. I'm gonna try to hit it again and hopefully get it out of here. Alright, so the and this entire piece just came off so now we got the bearing here so this is our old bearing okay so what i'm going to try to do now is i'm going to try to put a new bearing in for the one that i removed which is going to be this one so um, the first thing i want to do is i want to lubricate this area here just so that it's easier for the bearing to go in at least it makes it a little bit easier so i'm going to use uh white lithium uh grease maybe that might help so i'm just gonna spray a little bit i don't want to make a big mess spraying it right on top of this so i just put it right here just like that because you see all that stuff splash all over the place so i just grab some of this grease and i just try to apply it right over here uh, so the bearing uh, if you want you can do the same thing just put some lithium grease in here uh, but i think what's here is enough so here it is. It's a little bit of lithium grease. I'm going to try to push it in. Because as you can tell, it's not that easy. So it's not that easy to push that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this right on top of this. And now it's on top of the vise. I'm just going to tap it in here with a hammer. Just make sure it's going in evenly. And you want to tap just the center piece here. Don't go tapping the edges. Don't do, go tapping anything around. Just this center ring right here. And the reason why you do that is because you don't want to damage this area here where the bearings are. You can this takes more pressure than the outside part because they can basically break the area where the bearings are at. Uh, that casing there. So I'm just gonna tap the middle. And just in case if you're wondering, if you're looking here, it looks like it's going in. It's just like probably an eighth of an inch in there so far. So I'm gonna keep doing this. Remember that what we want to do is you want this area to be flush against the the center uh, rod. So keep tapping it. See, almost there. And so remember, all we gotta do is have this thing, have this bearing just flush against that rod. So that's what we're trying to do.
So I'm going to pass my finger over it just to feel it. So I feel like this the, this fraud is slightly below it, just slightly. So I'm going to work on that again. And just tap it a little bit more. I'm, I'm feeling for this. It looks like it's just there. Uh, it's actually feeling pretty well good. So I'm going to leave it like that. So now, now that it's there, see, I can, the bearing moves just fine. It's moving just fine. The other bearing is moving just fine. So now I have everything set. We can reassemble everything. So here we go. Take the first one. Just remove the screw. The same, same thing all around. So the four machine screws that were in there, I removed them. So now what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to take this cover off. So you see this, this is already loose. I should be able to pull this out, out of here. I'm probably going to need both hands for this. But the idea is that you're going to kind of like, actually I'm going to be able to pry it up with the screwdriver. Let me try to do that instead. There you go. You see it's moving now. Boom. This is out. See how dirty that is? We got to clean all that stuff off. I clean all that grease off and if you look in here you got to remove all that grease also so if i scrub this grease out look you can tell this is pretty old okay so after using paper towels i managed to clean this up by hand actually i didn't even have to spray anything most of that grease came off easily like in here you can tell i remove a lot of that grease it has a little bit on there i don't care about that uh, it doesn't make much of a difference to me, but this I use that paper towel and use all this too. It's quite a bit So that's how much I use for that um, I'm gonna try to see if I can clean this off a little bit It looks very clean actually uh, What I did is I used a paper towel and uh, I cleaned as much as I could and in between these grooves I try to use a screwdriver kind of like to slide it through and clean it off but then I realized, wait a second, I can just use it in my old toothbrush and clean all that stuff off. And I did. It looks pretty clean, I think. Um, now that, I, by the way, it doesn't matter that it has a little bit of grease on it. We want the grease there. It's just, I just wanted to remove the old grease. And I, So again, now that we have this clean, we, have, we, have the other, we have the other part clean. Now we're going to try to assemble everything again. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm going to assemble this part right here. Now, what I gotta do now is, uh, now that I clean all this in there, and I have this part right here, uh, I'm gonna use again this, this grease that I had sitting around, this synthetic grease. And, um, as you can tell, it's for wheel bearings, chase, and suspension. So what I'm doing is I'm putting um, grease in here. I'm putting quite a bit of grease. Actually, I, I want a lot of grease to be in here. And um, the reason for that is because when I opened this, there was a lot of grease in there. So, which means that uh, you don't have to um, be cheap about it uh, when it comes to grease here. You put as much as you can everywhere. Everything has to have grease on this. The idea is that you don't want any moisture to accumulate in here and, and damage the metal, rust the metal, or any of that. And I'm going to put some... On this wheel right here I'm gonna try to put it in here so you just let it slide in there very nice and soft now obviously it has to fit all the way in so I'm gonna try to put a little bit of pressure on it so it can slide in as you can tell it went right in so next what I gotta do is I gotta put the screws the machine screws that were there originally See, you don't have to do a lot of pressure. It's not machine screws. It's not any other type of screws. They're machine screws, so you don't have to over tighten them. So if that's enough, they're tight enough. They're not really holding much other than just that bearing in there. Make sure that this thing turns easily, and it does. In fact, when you start it off, it's a little bit rough. I mean, it's a little bit tough when you start it off. Once you keep going, all that, all that grease gets... Uh, gets mixed in there pretty well and it starts turning very nice and soft. 
so that one is done all right so next what I, what I want to do is I want to place this piece thing here so in order to do that we first got to kind of like lubricate this area here so again I take some of that the synthetic grease that I have so the thing is the piece that the part that we put in back here this piece right here um, the, that, that wheel that we ended up uh, having at the end of it, it's actually going to make contact with this right here. It's going to turn it. So what we're doing is now we're trying to press it in there. We want that bearing to go right in there. Uh, let me see. Maybe you can tell. You can see the bearing in there. So what we're going to do is we want to try to push it in there. Hopefully we're going to need some force to do that. But little by little, it's going to slide in. What you want to do is you got to wiggle it. You wiggle it left, right, up, down, and push in as you do that, so the bearing can go in and sit properly. So it looks to me like it's all over, all the way in. So when you push it in, what you do is you wiggle this left, right. Uh, what I mean by that is wiggle it like this, wiggle it like that, and push at the same time. And you'll notice it's going to sit properly in there. So it's going to slide in little by little. And at some point, it's going to go snap all the way in and you feel the, the uh, you feel the bearing sit exactly where it needs to sit so now as you can tell if I turn this right here the shaft right here if I turn it this turns too you see they're making a good connection so that's good so I finally got my bearing cup so this is it so this is basically a rubber type of cup that goes around the bearing and it sits in there all the way down there on the bottom. This look all the way down there. It's actually that's where it sits all the way down there. But if but what happened is that and I'm gonna see if I can show you this. But here, this is part of the I believe it's part of the bearing cup right here. So I'm gonna try to see if I can somehow remove it so that I can put the the bearing cup that I have in there. What I'm doing right now is I'm using my screwdriver to fit it between the the case and the uh, and the actual rubber part. So I'm just I'm gonna kind of like move it a little bit, move the screwdriver a little bit like this until I get all around it. See that's one piece right there that came off. That piece. So that's why if you ever have a motor and you start smelling a burnt smell, you should stop your motor right there and open it up and see if there's any issues inside the motor. Because if you keep running it, you're basically going to run the risk of, of burning the plastic, whatever plastic seals you have in there. Right, almost there. Going all around. There we go. There we go. I'm going to get that out of there now. All right, here we go. So I look inside. See, inside it looks like it's, everything is out of there, which is exactly what we wanted. And here is what was left of that bearing cup. This piece is right here. And this is how it's supposed to look. So. Now that with that aside, this this is our bearing. Bearing bearing cup is gonna fit in nice and snug like that. Uh, unfortunately, this is this is dry by the way. All this is dry. So I'm gonna put a, a little bit of um, grease on it so that it can slide in nice and smooth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this in here. So there it is. The opening of the bearing cup has to face obviously up. Oh look, it's sat really nice and snug in there. It's kind of easy to put it in there. So now it's in. So next, what we gotta do is, like I said, we're gonna try to lubricate um, the bearing outer casing so it can go in nice and, and easy. So I'm gonna take a little bit of grease any bit of grease put it right on the outer casing of the bearing all 
think that should be enough. Let me clean off the axis. There we go. I'm going to put some on the front of it, like on the face of the bearing around here, just in case. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the armature. I'm going to try to slide it in nice and easy. Now let's see, how does this go? So I'm going to turn this around. See if this goes like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the screws back on because it looks like everything ran right in. Um, leave the bearing is sitting exactly where it needs to sit. And if you want to verify, you look down here and you can see the bearing right here. So it looks like it if it went right in where it needed to go so now what I got to do is put the screws back on the ones that belong to this okay so next uh, let's put the motor on the side the label facing up obviously the cable is on the same side of the label and uh, the this uh, big bolt here that goes towards the ground and what you do is the small bracket that you have see how it has like a it's like an L shape type of piece that one faces the area where the bolt is and you put it right below here and you take the first screw put it through this hole and then pass it on pass it on through that gap there and just screw it on to the around there we go so now next we're going to take the next screw second screw and the other screw and just screw them in by hand obviously so you don't want to cross thread it like right there is fine not too not too tight see this is easy so i'm going to tighten it a little bit more so like right here i don't know if you can tell right here there's like a little area that is raised that little area that is raised is going to fit right into this hole right here so that way it sits on it while you deal with the the bolts so that's all you got to do like line it up line it up let me see if i can show you this part there you go it lines up and look right there i'm not putting too much pressure the motor is actually holding on to it staying on it so that's what i'm doing i'm going to try to see if i can line it up again there right here where this bracket is i'm going to put the first bolt right in there that should hold the motor at least stable so i can get around and use my other hand to put the other bolts in now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the brushes in uh, I think it's better to put them now before I put the motor in there because it's going to be difficult to reach in the area for the, for the brushes. So I'm just going to put the brushes back in and uh, pretty much probably can notice that the slot here on the, the area of the brush goes it has a specific shape to it. That's a, they're the same way you're going to put your brush in, make it fit to the last shape and then you kind of like push it in. That's so and like just and like just like that, and then what you do is the little cap that comes with it, this little cap here. I'm gonna try to make sure that it fits in nicely, and then now I'm gonna take the cap and put it right on top of it. Make sure that this that it fits in nice. See this this didn't sit properly. Once I pushed it in, it came off. I gotta do it again. Let's see if I can move this over. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can push it back in again. And I'm gonna take the, the cap again, try to get it in while the brush is still in there. And I want to take a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna try to see if I can screw this in properly without cross threading it. Just like that. Okay. I'm gonna go in. To that slot right there and you see there's like two little hooks here they go right they're gonna follow that that are uh, the brushes so next I'm gonna take this this little cap here put it right on top like that and I'm telling you it's not easy to do this sometimes it, it just comes off doesn't sit properly so you got to take it off and try it again but now this is all done so uh, again, I'm trying to see if I can uh, if 
find a way to hold, make this motor stay up here stay up here and the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna take it's a little screw that goes in here see it has it's like a Phillips head so I'm gonna put that in here and it comes with a nut this nut goes back here you see I wish I had like somebody to hold this for me so I can focus on this but I don't have anyone right now to help me so get not back here so now I see the motor is at least hanging somewhere I'm gonna try to tighten this even further so that the motor stops moving too much while I focus on uh, putting those bolts which I was trying to avoid doing so I'm gonna put my hand underneath this. I'm gonna see if I can screw it on with a socket because I noticed that by screwing it on with my hand and the bolt, it wasn't too easy. Yeah, with the socket, it seems to be easier. You have more, you can actually control the the, the screw, the bolt better. Yeah, there, there you go. So that's a little bit easier. So just use a socket, uh, the 13 millimeter socket, to be able to screw on the bolts. So that's one, the next one should be right next to it. So right here, same thing again. Try to screw it on to it. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower this now. You can tell if when I lower it, I get more room. I'm gonna lower it even further. There. So I get kind of like more room to work. All right, that one is tight. So the last one, I think I'm gonna, let me see if I can use a ratchet. Maybe the ratchet might help me. See, that was in. I'm gonna use my finger to grab onto the socket. There it is. Yeah, it looks like that's it as far as it's gonna go. So I'm gonna start tightening the bolts. All right, so it looks like that one is tied all the way. Make sure the other ones didn't get, didn't get too loose. Yeah, it looks like everything is good. So they're tight. So now next, this screw right here, I'm gonna make sure that that's tight. Screw, I'm gonna tighten the knot in the back instead. It's easier for me. There we go, that's tight enough. So the black connector goes here, the white connector goes here, and the ground goes here where the screw is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting everything together because um, I'm going to try to start the machine later on. So I'm going to connect all the wires. First I'm going to start with the ground. Okay, so the way that, that you set this up is that take a little star here. A little washer take your ground cable it goes right on top of the washer and then you put a screw on it and so here's the ground cable put the screw right through it once I put the screw through it then I go right over here Put the screw where it belongs, and now we gotta tighten that screw. And you can use a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten it, or you can use a flat head, but I'm gonna use a Phillips, tool, Phillips screw since I already have it. So that's done. Next, what I wanna do is I'm gonna put the power cable, the power wire back on, which is a black one. It goes up here next to the other black one. There it is, it snaps right in. You can hear it and feel it. And then the white one, there you go, it's right in. I'm gonna take this and put it right over here. And then Take the screw and put it right through here. Put 
So right here, the green wires, they got they gotta fit into this little gap right here. Yeah. And this area right here, this gap right here, it's actually where this two two thick wires have to go on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to press them in so they're flush against the casing of the machine. And I'm gonna take this, try to push it down. So I'm gonna use a screwdriver from one end, gonna tie in this a little bit. Now I can see over here that this green wire, the ground wire, is kinda like too high up. So I'm gonna push it down so it can go inside that casing area. And I'm gonna keep on tightening the bottom tight enough so the, the ground wires are right in between that little opening there the two big wires are in between that opening there so everything is in where it needs to go all right before i forget let me just uh, let me show you this part uh put put that cover where it goes the legs where they go so what we do is we take take the bolt put it from under they don't stick up on the other end so now have the bolt there remember you just put the washer where it needs to go the washer the way it goes is like you have this washer it goes on the bolt like this and now you push the bolt up now take the nut put it on the bolt and again tie it by hand as it can go and that's done all right so now we're going to use a 13 millimeter socket i'm going to take one up here just, just, just to hold it while i tie the, the bottom piece stay there and then nothing much so we're done assembling everything all we got to do now is test it make sure everything works fine and we're good okay so now i need to put the blade back on so to put the blade on, I want to remove this, this guard right here. And now this should come off easily. So that gives me good access to this area here where I'm going to put the blade in. So you see that's where the blade is going to go right here. Alright, so now uh, I'm going to take this blade. This is a blade that, that I had originally. The, the way that this should cut is this, is this direction. So that's why the teeth are pointing this way and I'm going to put in the blade just like that in here. The handle to raise and lower is on this side too. Uh, so basically this is the this is your the way you're going to be working facing that way. So the blade is in. Now this washer goes in. And now the the nut goes in. Uh, 1516 socket and uh, you're going to tie in it clockwise meaning if you're looking at it this way uh, you're going to tie in it in a clockwise direction I'm going to use this wrench that I have here the 24 uh, millimeter wrench uh, it's very thin this is generally used for bikes but it's very thin so it allows me to fit this wrench in here there so I can grab onto that um, and now I'm going to use my socket, fit it in here, and with a wrench and the socket, I'm going to see if I can tighten this. Now, there's not much room here for me to tighten it, but that should be good. That's as tight as I was able to get it, so it should be good there. And now I'm going to put the, this little guard back on here. So the guard is back on, and now I'm going to take the screws, put them back where they go. Again, these are machine screws, so don't try to go all crazy when you're trying to tighten when you're trying to tighten them. And just nug, and they should that should be good. There it is. Make sure the other one is tight enough. There it is. So we're good. Uh, this is ready. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test it out and make sure this actually runs now because before it was just humming, it wasn't doing anything. Right, so now it's time when I connect the power. 
power on. There we go, we have this button. <laughs> can tell it works just fine now so problem solved machine has been repaired and now we're able to get back to work hope you learned something if you did thumbs up and uh, take care